Hi everyone. I was wondering if my projects are good enough for a woodworking channel content. So I decided to make a kumiko shelf with hand tools to improve my skills and hope at the end of the day, it's gonna be at least closer to the woodworking channel that you are looking for. And here's what I got. Honestly, I tried my hardest because I guess that's the way to show appreciation to my 300 friends on YouTube. So let's see how I built it. I got many fancy woods at the Home Depot and it pressured me not to ruin them by mistake. And as usual, I started the project with cutting the wood. The jig works fine for a rip cut, but now I got show another side of this jig. It's a manual track saw. Isn't that cool? And then I cut the one by twos. Anyways, it seems like many people skip this section of the video, so let me try something more entertaining. Don't tell me it's off the beat. That's my editing skill limitation. Now back to the woodworking. I'm making a hidden sliding dovetail joint, which is one of the main objects for this project. A hidden sliding dovetail joint is basically a series of dovetails. I didn't have an extra piece of wood, so I was really carefree chiseling. This is actually one of the reasons I upgraded my chisel set, as I wanted to use long chisels. Just so you know, the dovetail angle is about 76 degree. I didn't measure it, but it's a slope between quarter inch and one sixteenth of an inch. Now the mortising part. First, I drilled the holes and cleaned them. I was lazy and randomly drilled bunches of holes, but if you nicely drilled them closer to each other, it will save your time of cleaning the edges. Okay, time to make the slope. I see Japanese people put water on wood before chiseling, and it's supposed to make the chiseling easier, but I don't know, I didn't feed it. Anyways, I roughly chisel the waste part with a small chisel and then with a wider chisel, I finalize the slope. And now taper the edges of each mortise and dovetail. Then I dry fit them halfway and I felt it's gonna be just about right. Though it was too hard to take it off. Now Kumiko. Since this is a shelf, I didn't want a complicated Kumiko for dust cleaning reasons when using it. So it's simple Mitsukude pattern. It's pretty much as usual other than my new jig for Kumiko. I guess soon I'll make a Kumiko tips video for absolute woodworking beginners. And stupidly, I marked the wrong lengths and cut them. This is actually my first time making this long Kumiko and here I found a thing. When you make a large piece, like in the video, you should lay all straight lines first and work on both top and bottom crossing lines from the center. If you work on straight lines and only top or bottom first, the other side won't fit easily. I did this the wrong way for the first panel and I thought I was gonna need to make it again. I broke some pieces and made several more strips, but I managed to fit them. Here's a quick view of a useful tip to mortise where you fit kumiko. 
I wanted to take one sixteenth of an inch off of the frame wood. So first, I cut it in bunches of straight lines by a marking gauge. And then, scraped the waste off by a chisel. It was so easy. Just so you know, when doing this, you should be careful which side to go from, like the picture shown. This makes a huge difference in the finished surface. Anyways, I cleaned them after. Moving on to tenons and mortises for a framework. First, I worked on shelf boards. It was like a dado fitting, so after doing lots of chiseling work, it was no longer a big deal. Then I started on my other missions for this project, which was a double tenon joint. The mortise part of the double tenons wasn't that difficult at all, so it was like a chores. However, the tenon part was a bit tricky for me. The most difficult thing was adjustment of the tenon. When it just done and fit very tightly, but it's a little bit twisted, it was so difficult to tell which part of the tenon interferes and cause the twist. I carefully sliced off the last part to avoid losing the tightness. Then I did a wedge joint, which was another mission. When I did the wedge joint for the first time with a bench project, there was a little gap and I thought it was mainly because of the wood softness. But after thinking and researching, I came to a conclusion that the slopes on the mortise were too short. So this time, I made slopes close to the other end of the mortise. You'll see how it goes. It's almost there, but I still have to chamfer the edges. Basically, I marked the lines like the picture shown and planed the edges off. It was easier than I thought and I was very happy with the result. Then I did the same thing for all other pieces and for the legs, I kind of tried to make a little bit of curvy lines. It seems like there is a special planer for curved line but of course I don't have it, so I tried it with my one and only planer. I wanted to make it more curvy but I was scared that all four legs don't look alike so it's only a little bit at this time. Then I sanded everything by hand from 120 grit to 400 grit. I was telling myself to become a sanding machine and tried so hard and I noticed I sanded my nails so hard. Finally, I can assemble all the pieces. I started with the base of legs where I did the wedge joint. This is where actually people most likely won't pay attention to, so I used the purple heart wedge on purpose. Hopefully, someone's gonna find it someday. And now, the side panel. I thought it's easy, but it seems like I put too much glue and it took a long time to clean the excess amount after the assemble. So please don't use glue too much, especially when the joints are already tight from the beginning. Then I put the side panel onto the base. When dry fitting, I could fit everything okay but it didn't go in now. I guess somehow somewhere is a slightly dislocated by glue? I don't know, and this scared me a lot. But I managed to push them in with a clamp. Now, this is the hidden sliding dovetail. Sorry, I forgot to record the beginning part. My mind was totally focused on the assembly too much. But yeah, I didn't need glue for this joint, but just in case, I put a little bit of glue. Finally, I joined the top and legs and pinned in, just in case. Okay, it's a real last part, oiling. I know it wobbles because tiles on my house isn't flat. So I put adjustable furniture feet. Yes, I actually used a screw, but it's just for these legs. Here's the final piece. I learned a lot from this project. 
It looks good to me, but because I marked with an exacto knife pretty strong, it left a lot of knife marks, and there are a lot more things I should improve. In addition, African mahogany I picked up didn't have as beautiful grain as the small test piece, but I kind of like the rustic feeling. Anyways, I'm not even thinking to sell it at all, but my hidden goal for this project was actually to achieve quality that meets material cost and my labor. Hmm, I definitely need to have more skills and speed. That's it for today. Oh, but like I said, I'm planning to make a video of how to make kumiko for absolute woodworking beginners who don't even have tools to start with yet. And another video I'm working on now is about good budget tools to start woodworking with from my past 6 month woodworking experience. Okay, that's really it. Thank you so much for watching. I would be happy if you liked the video and happier if you subscribe to this channel. If you have any suggestion to my video, it's also welcome. See you!